You're a member of the Hukbala Hop, often known as the Hooks for short, a rebellious communist insurgency movement that operated in the Philippines between 1942 and 1954. You're patrolling the back streets of Papanga, a province around the northern shores of Manila Bay where the group's stronghold was based. It's night out, full dark, no stars. You may be shouldering your rifle, but something feels wrong. There's evil in the air. That's when you find a body laying on the side of the road. It's Rodrigo, one of your fellow soldiers, dead. And even worse, he's got gaping wounds in his neck and appears to have been completely drained of blood. It seems to you that there's one obvious conclusion. Rodrigo has been devoured by a vampire. While given the context, you can't be blamed for believing that. The reality is even more bizarre. Your fellow soldier has actually been killed by the US Central Intelligence Agency. And the vampire thing wasn't an accident either. During their 1950s conflicts with the Hooks, the CIA was framing vampires to strike fear into their superstitious enemies. Ok, ok, this is a lot to take in. Let's go back to the beginning and figure this all out. During the Japanese occupation of the Philippines in 1942, a myriad of Filipino peasant guerrilla groups rose up to fight their Japanese oppressors. The radical and communist Hukbalahap group was one of the most successful of those, fighting both the Japanese forces and assassinating wealthy Filipinos who collaborated with the occupiers. The Hooks were strong, effective, and popular, and by the end of the 1940s they'd achieved sizable political gains. They'd seized large portions of Luzon, the country's most populated island. They established their own independent government in Luzon after the aftermath of the war. They created their own system of laws, collected taxes from citizens, and even hoarded an impressive stockpile of around 500,000 rifles. Naturally, a militant communist satellite nation with a huge stockpile of weapons wasn't something a Cold War era US government took kindly to. In 1946, things took a turn for the worse. The Philippines was scheduled to finally achieve independence from the US on the 4th of July much like the United States' independence from the British monarchy. An election was held to determine government positions in the new independent Philippines, and the Hooks took part. However, Luis Taruk, the leader of the Hooks, was unseated from the Filipino Congress by their rivals, the Liberal Party. This was the beginning of the Hukbalahap Rebellion. The new liberal government, led by President Manuel Roxas, took an aggressive stance toward the Hook forces. This, however, ended up seriously backfiring. The government troops suffered from a lack of training and low morale, and their oppressive retaliations against villagers only helped grow support for the more populist Hooks. As a result, over the next four years, the number and support of the Hooks grew to the point that they were ready to stage a siege on Manila by the year 1950. The Philippines looked like it might be going red. That's when President Harry S. Truman decided to put his finger on the scale. The 1950s were a busy time for the Central Intelligence Agency, who were meddling in foreign affairs left and right in the name of democracy, sort of, and the American way. That same decade, they overthrew democratically elected Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh's government in Iran to install monarch Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. They also rigged elections in Italy in favor of a right-wing government, deposed Guatemalan President Juan Jacobo Arbenz Guzman, and supported military dictator Fulgencio Batista in Cuba. Ok, maybe the US was less interested in democracy and more in keeping the status quo. So throwing their weight behind crushing a communist Filipino insurgency was all in a day's work for the CIA. If you have a passing knowledge of the Philippine political history, you probably remember the large shipment of advanced weaponry kindly donated to the liberal Philippine government by the US government in the early 1950s. What you probably don't know is how the American military weaponized local vampire superstitions as a form of psychological warfare against the Hooks. Psychological operations or PSYOPs typically consists of using demoralizing posters and pamphlets to chip away at enemy morale. But there technically wasn't anything in the PSYOP rulebook that said you couldn't fake a string of brutal vampire attacks, especially if your commanding officer wasn't exactly averse to the crazy. Enter Lt. Col. Edward G. Lansdale, an American military operative well known for his creativity. Whether it was taking part in the US military's hundreds of attempts on Fidel Castro's life, or writing Vietnamese astrological almanacs to better understand the spiritual side of the Viet Cong. In The Art of War, Sun Tzu wrote, if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. This was a mantra that Lansdale took to heart, as he immediately set a contingent of his men to study the local folklore and superstition. The Hooks were a populist group. 
formed largely of conscripted volunteers from local villages during World War II. As a result, many of them were staunch believers in local Philippine legends. Lansdale knew this and intended to take advantage of it. But in case you think Lansdale was being a real blue sky thinker here, this wasn't even the first time the US government had used supernatural tactics to gain a psychological advantage in battle. During World War II, the Nazis were notoriously superstitious people who invested a lot of resources in the occult. Heinrich Himmler, the leader of the terrifying Nazi SS, even owned Wiefelsburg Castle, a location where he and his soldiers were believed to have performed occult rituals. In order to psych out the German populace, the US Army weaponized astrology, distributing horoscopes with grim futures for Germany in order to hurt morale. It's also believed that the British military made fake monsters during World War II to strike fear into the hearts of superstitious villagers in fascist Italy. And a few decades later, the US Army deployed the spookily named named Operation Wandering Soul to freak out the Viet Cong. Vietnamese Buddhists held the strong belief that if one's body was not given proper burial rites, their soul will wander the earth as a tortured spirit forever. The US took advantage of this by blasting recordings supposedly to mimic the tortured wailing of displaced Viet Cong souls whose bodies still lay strewn across the battlefield. Yeah, it's a little messed up when you think about it, but war has never been a picnic. And all of this will seem like child's play compared to some of the plans Lansdale concocted and laid out during his offensive against the Hooks. Lansdale and his men studied the sociocultural beliefs of the Hooks extensively, finding information on a myriad Filipino curses and monsters. Lansdale practiced by convincing locals that they'd be cursed if they supported communism, to modest success. But he truly fell in love when he discovered the monstrous Aswang. For those of you not familiar with Filipino folklore, the Aswang is like a particularly horrifying variant of the vampire exclusive to the Philippines. It's said to take the form of a seemingly normal woman during the day, but at night, it's a whole different story. They're shapeshifters that can take the form of various people or animals to get close to their intended victims. But what really separates the Aswang from your garden variety vampire is the way they feed on their victims. Unlike western vampires, with their two very sharp canines, the Aswang is believed to have fed with its long blade-like tongue. That's right, almost like a giant horrifying mosquito, the Aswang would extend its long hungry tongue toward the neck of its victims, pierce and suck. What's more, for an Aswang, there's more than just blood on the menu. It's also believed in most variations of the legend that Aswang also used their bladed tongues to pierce the navels of pregnant women to feed on the fetus within. In particularly superstitious communities, Aswang attacks are often the assumed reason for tragic miscarriages during pregnancy. Most people would read the accounts of the Aswang and feel a shiver crawl down their spine. This thing makes Dracula look like a teddy bear but not Lt. Col. Edward G. Lansdale. Being an experienced military strategist and also ever so slightly insane, Edward G. Lansdale looked at the Aswang and saw a great opportunity for waging psychological warfare against the Hooks. And that's exactly what he did, in perhaps the most violent and terrifying way you possibly could imagine. The plan was to fake a series of Aswang attacks on Hukbalahap soldiers in order to sow fear and discord. They had already spent weeks spreading rumors of a vicious local Aswang in the hills, but to really seal the deal they needed to do something a little more practical. There was no polite way to do this, so Lansdale jumped straight to brutal murder and proceeded from there. His first opportunity to test out his new psychological warfare attack was on a seemingly impenetrable hilltop fortress in Luzon held by the Hooks. Any attack staged against the settlement seemed bound to fail, and Filipino government forces were almost ready to give up on reclaiming it. Hook soldiers would patrol nightly in shifts to secure the area, and after meticulously planning his attack, Lansdale and his men were ready to strike. After weeks of observation, he noticed that the last patrol of the night was performed by a lone soldier. Under Lansdale's orders, his men swooped in and kidnapped this lone patrolman. This terrified Hook soldier was dragged into the woods to become the first guinea pig in Edward G. Lansdale's Aswang experiment. The unfortunate soldier was hung upside down by his ankles and then stabbed in the throat with a combat knife and quite literally bled out like a stuck pig. The average adult body weighing from 150 to 180 pounds has around 5.5 liters or 1.5 gallons of blood, and Lansdale spilled all of this unfortunate patrolman's blood on the ground of the Luzon jungle. Then they took his exsanguinated corpse and dumped it on the roadside to anyone who wrongly assumed, like the Hooks, that the US Army couldn't possibly be crazy enough to do this, it seemed like a pitch-perfect Aswang attack. 
When the patrolman's bloodless body, complete with a ragged puncture mark in his throat, was found by his fellow Hook soldiers the next morning, terror spread among the guerrilla forces. This hilltop settlement that seemed previously immovable suddenly relocated. The Hooks may not have feared the Japanese, Filipino, or American soldiers, but an Aswang? That was way out of their league. The hilltop was soon reclaimed by the Philippine government in the Hooks' absence. Lansdale had done it, he'd successfully faked a vampire attack and terrified a powerful military enemy, and all it took was horrifically mutilating the body of an unfortunate Hook patrolman in Luzon. Naturally, Edward G. Lansdale didn't stop there. Inspired by his success with the Aswang mission, he employed other strange supernatural cywar tactics to freak the Hooks into submission. Another one of his trademark techniques, most of which played out almost like sadistic practical jokes, was what he dubbed the Eye of God. For this tactic, he and his men would sneak into villages at night and paint sinister <laughs> eyes on the buildings in the area, normally facing the homes of suspected Hook sympathizers, as though they were being watched by some mysterious supernatural force. This was another success for Lansdale. He later wrote in his memoir, the mysterious presence of these malevolent eyes the next morning had a sharply sobering effect. That memoir, by the way, was titled In the Midst of Wars, An American's Mission to Southeast Asia. Personally, we would have gone with How to Win Wars by Being an Absolute Maniac by Edward the Aswang Lansdale. And they did indeed win the war. By 1954, the Hukbalahap Rebellion was brought to its knees. The combination of unconventional war tactics like the ones incorporated by Lansdale and his men, and the huge shipment of weapons given to Filipino government forces by the U.S., and the election of popular President Ramon Magsese, which brought the hearts and minds of the Philippine public back to Manila, all served to bring success. When the Hook leader, Luis Taruk, surrendered on May 17th of that year, things were pretty much over for the Hook forces. Another war successfully interfered with by the CIA. So, what have we learned today? Sometimes, when you want to achieve success in life, you need to think outside the box, just like Edward G. Lansdale. Just maybe think twice before you hang a man upside down by his ankles and drain all the blood from his throat. Thank you for watching this episode of the Infographic Show. War is hell, but expanding your mind with fun educational videos is heaven. Want to know more about crazy wartime antics? Check out how a soldier single-handedly liberated an entire German-occupied city.